Subaru have been taking their wagons and hatchbacks and jacking them up since the 1970s and calling them things like Leone and Loyal and even Gravel Express. But this is the model where it all came together, the Subaru XV, or if you're watching this from North America, the XV Crosstrek. Yes, there was an Impreza XV before this, and yes, this is built on the Impreza platform, but these XVs were the first ones that were engineered to be a standalone XV model. But now that the XV has been around since 2012, what are these first generations like after a few years and a few thousand kilometers? Are they any good? Are they reliable? What do they cost to fix? The big question is, should you buy one? Now, before we get deep into the XV and if you should buy one, do us a favor and hit the subscribe button, give us a like, hit the bell icon for notifications on when we put new videos up, and also why not jump on Instagram and Facebook and follow us. Now for this video, we are gonna be focusing on the Australian variants of the XV, but if you're watching this from outside of Australia, don't freak out because all of the information and impressions we're giving will relate to XVs in your area. In Australia, this generation of XV was available in three different trim models, with each trim model receiving a few extra bits and pieces. But while we can't go into every graphic detail about every different spec in this video for obvious reasons, we have collected and put all that information in our handy re-driven cheat sheets. Our cheat sheets are invaluable as they provide a full breakdown of the car's model range, its common problems, what you need to look out for before you hand over your hard-earned cash, how much of that cash you should be handing over, and so much much more. Check it out in the link below. Back in 2014, this had to be one of the best looking SUVs on the market, and okay, this is only sort of five years old, but it still looks great, and Subaru clearly thinks so too, because here's a new one, and here's this one. They look almost identical, almost like Emma Mackey and Margot Robbie. Okay, no offense to all the soccer mums out there, but these SUVs, they can start to look a bit soccer mum, but I reckon the XV doesn't look soccer mum at all. It kind of looks all compact and tough and rugged. And it's a great size too. It's like, it's not too big, it's not too small. It's big enough to have a bit of presence on the road, but still small enough to be easy to park and be zippy through traffic. Even the alloys are up to date, all the black plastic is still, well, well black, and the paint's showing no signs of wear or fade. It's a bloody good thing. Inside, it still looks looks great in here. The overall design is still really, really modern. Not that the car's that old anyway, but even the leather, like it hasn't it hasn't aged badly. It hasn't gone like shiny and doesn't feel cheap. Like yeah, there are some hard plastics here and there, but it's actually aging really, really well. All the switch gear still feels really solid. Like all the buttons you press just feel confident and strong. It's really impressive. The seats are really comfortable. They're not overly supportive like say a sports seat, but they're really comfy. And also the leather like everywhere else, it hasn't aged badly, it still looks good. And here's a weird little fun fact, even though this car is a manual, it has paddles for the automatic gearbox. It's kind of like Vin Diesel wearing a wig, it's like, mate, we know you're bald, the wig isn't fooling us. We know this is a manual, the paddles aren't fooling us. How's the tech? See this infotainment system? It is utter crap. Luckily it was replaced in older model XVs, but if you're looking at one of these ones and it has that, put some money aside and get a new infotainment system because I can't begin to tell you how annoyingly, horrifically bad this thing is. Fun fact, it's not actually Subaru's fault. That's actually a Toyota unit. So Toyota, how the hell did you let that go to market? Because it's just... It's shit. It does have a USB charging port and an auxiliary input, so that's a plus, but this thing is fuck. Well, the boot isn't exactly the biggest in its class and it barely fits me, a six foot two tall adult male, but the seats do fold flat, so you should get less wear and tear at the base of the backs of the seats. So the rear seat's not too bad, like it is a small car, but this is in my driving position and there's still plenty of leg room, heaps of headroom, a bit of foot room. There's storage pockets here. You've got door bins down the side that'll hold a decent sized bottle of water. And in the armrest, another two cup holders. It's pretty good. Up front, there are a couple of cup holders here. There's storage here, there's storage here. Also, this slides back and forth to make it more comfortable. The door bins are quite good. The drink bottle holder in the door bin doesn't hold a big bottle, but they do the job. Storage there, storage obviously in the glove box, storage here, pretty practical. There are a couple of little nooks and crannies in these smaller storage bits that are really hard to get to when you're cleaning and can get filthy pretty quickly. Now, I'd love to tell you how reliable these things are and what they cost to fix and maintain, but the thing is, I'm not a qualified mechanic, but we have a qualified mechanic, so over to you, Jim. Thanks, Adam. Subaru XV. They're a good car. The CVT transmissions are shit. When they fail, it's really expensive, three or $4,000. Strongly recommend you just get a manual. Another problem with the Subaru XV is the rear wheel bearings. They can fail 
40, 50,000 Ks. It's not a really expensive job, maybe three or 400 bucks per side, but be prepared for that as well. Also with the Subaru XV, they do burn a bit of oil. Regular servicing is great, but be prepared to just, just check the oil between services. You might have to add half a litre. It's totally okay, but just be prepared to do that. There has been a pretty big recall campaign with these things. They have a problem in the engine, which is something to do with the valve springs. If you're gonna get one, just look into it and see if that's been done, just to save you a bit of hassle later on. Besides that, pretty good, solid little car, a good all-rounder. Safety-wise, the XV did lack a lot of high-tech safety gear like blind spot monitoring, lane departure warnings, and autonomous emergency braking, some of which was available later in the car's life cycle. But back in 2013, it was awarded the maximum five-star crash rating from ANCAP and comes with seven airbags, ABS, traction, and stability control. So while it's safe, it's not like ultra safe compared to, say, a new XV. So you know how Subaru are uh, almost renowned for their rally bred performance cars like the WRX and STI. Well, it seems like the XV forgot that because this is not a fast car. Actually, this is almost annoyingly slow. Overtaking is gonna require you to have a whole lot of space and even more courage. And even just getting out of a driveway, you're gonna to have to put your foot through the floor to go anywhere. And even then, you're not gonna be going anywhere very fast. The engine has 110 kilowatts, but the real issue is the 196 newton meters of torque, which is not very much. And the problem with not having a lot of torque is it means even driving around town smoothly becomes a bit of a challenge. As Jim said, you gotta make sure you get the manual instead of the auto, but even then the manual, the gear change, it's not that great. It's not, it's not horrible, but it's just a bit overly notchy and the throw's a bit long and it's just, it's a bit yuck. And while we're on criticisms, the ride isn't that great. You'd think being sort of a jacked up SUV, you'd have like a really cushy ride. And when these were brand new, they actually were praised for having comfortable car-like handling. But now after 100,000 Ks, it's just pretty harsh and firm under the bum. It's um, a little disappointing. But look, it's not all bad. Because you've got that raised ride height, you're gonna be able to clear pretty much anything that comes across your path, unless you're gonna be doing any of that hardcore full wheel driving or rock climbing. Plus, because of the symmetrical all wheel drive system, it always feels really short footed and confident on the road. It just feels safe. And look, it's not the most driver focused car out there, but it just gets the job done. And look, this particular car's got a couple of little rattles coming from the dashboard, but besides that, it feels as solid as a rock. And here in Australia, early base model 2.0Is with north of 200,000 kilometres will be asking around about eight grand, whereas ultra low kilometre 2017 top spec and pristine 2.0ISs are still in the very high 20 grand region. While the XV isn't exactly the cheapest when it comes to fuel economy in this segment, all in all, it's a sensible choice when it comes to running costs. The claimed fuel economy figure of around 7 litres per 100 kilometres is being pretty optimistic as we found you have to drive the underpowered engine pretty hard to really get anywhere. But on the flip side, Subaru's almost notorious reputation for dodgy head gaskets in their 2.5 litre engines are generally avoided as the XV is a 2 litre. And being a Subaru, they are a very reliable thing. And you know what? Even if something does go wrong, parts are readily available and they're not all that expensive either. New, the XV came with a three year unlimited kilometre warranty and servicing should happen every six months or 12 and a half thousand kilometres. Keep the regular services up and you shouldn't have a drama. Yes, but there are conditions. It's a yes as long as you buy a manual and not an auto. If you do absolutely need to get an auto, maybe look at a Mazda CX-5 or a Toyota RAV4 instead. But if you can get the manual, get one of these and get it in a 2.0 IS. See, while these top spec 2.0 ISs were eight and a half thousand dollars more than the base model, in the second hand market, you can have a top spec XV for just a few hundred dollars more than a base spec. And with the amount of extras you're getting, it's worth every cent. Just make sure you change the infotainment system because it is f uh, Sorry about that. Anyway, that was the Subaru XV. What do you think? Would you buy one? Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments section below.